Good afternoon and welcome to the another uh, webinar by the Faith-Based Online Learning Directors Group. Uh, this webinar is entitled Video Enhanced Observation and the presenter is Dr. Stephanie Mafud. Uh, I'll give a brief um, introduction of Dr. Mafud and then I will turn it over to her uh, for her to share her screen and, uh, and uh, let us know about this uh, incredible new tool. Uh, well, it's a, an old tool for her, but it'll be a new tool for us. Um, Dr. Mafud is an Associate Professor of Special Education in the Department of Teacher Education and Director of Field Experience uh, in the Department of Teacher Education, and she is the Director of Field Experience. She is the Primary Advisor for the Special Education Certification Program at the graduate level. She has taught K-12 through learners with special needs in a variety of settings, including Tunisia and North Africa, where she was assigned for two years as a Peace Corps volunteer. And in the interest of full disclosure, that's where I met her and uh, allowed her to change her last name to Mafud because uh, I figured that was a better one than the one she had. Uh, so with that, I turn it over to uh, Dr. Mafud. Dr. Mafud? Thank you, Dr. Mafud. <laughs> I am the other Dr. S. Mafud, which makes people who call us really, really confused. So sometimes they'll say, hey, can I talk to Dr. Mafud? And I'll say speaking, and then they pause. And they say, S. Mafud, and I say, speaking, and they say, is there a man? And I say, oh, you want the other one. Okay, so I'll give you him. So um, I am a, I am not a theologian. I am a teacher. I teach teachers. Um, I will warn you to, yes, so, so Sebastian's in Siberia, so his, his visuals are not as great as what upstairs looks like. However, I have the dog, the two kids, and whatever doorbell that's going to ring. So, you know, it's a trade-off whether you're up or downstairs. Um, Sebastian said that one of the hats that I wear at Webster is that I'm the director of field experience. Um, so I work and oversee um, supervisors who are supervising our students in practicum and apprentice teaching. Um, we've had an interesting semester turning the boat on that because midway through the semester, our students had no place to go. So that has been an interesting, um, an interesting professional challenge. Um, but one of the things that I have started using and I'm working to expand across our programs is what I'm going to talk about today, which is VO, or it is an acronym for Video Enhanced Observation. Um, and I'll give you a little background before I show you the bells and whistles of it. Um, we were being faced um, an, in an increasing, um, to an increasing degree, um, two very specific student types that were coming through our programs and then going into the field and they were presenting some unique challenges to us. And so one kind of population is that we are increasingly seeing um, much more diversity in terms of just students who are non-neurotypical coming through our programs. So students who are on the autism spectrum um, in some way, um, students um, with sort of social skills deficits, um, both diagnosed and undiagnosed. Um, special education in particular tends to attract those students because they will say, I was a student who received special ed services, and so I want to be a special ed teacher because I know what it's like to have a disability. Um, these students looked really good on paper. They could do great assignments. They are typically our straight A students. Um, when you look at the curriculum that they design and, and what they turn in, they look great. And then they get into the field and they look like, you know, they teach they teach and they don't move. They teach and they don't vary their facial expression. They teach and they look like students are going to kill them and they're going, they want to hide behind their desk or their podium. Um, they're not able to flexibly sort of riff and shift um, as needed in the field and they, were, they, they struggle. Um, Additionally, a second population that we um, are increasingly having to um, address and, and adjust to meet their needs are students with anxiety. And so these two are very high achieving students, but um, are, are rather inflexible in terms of how they um, see themselves as teachers. They design dynamite um, instructional experiences for students 
And if that, if their, um, if their lesson plan goes off script in any way, shape, or form, it really, really throws them off. They don't know how to kind of, again, react, um, improvise, shift in the, um, in the moment. And that really, they, they do struggle as well. So un unfortunately, part of my job as field experience director is that I'm the guy that you see if, if somebody needs to be pulled from the field. And, and that's often a heart-wrenching, heartbreaking experience because these students are at the end of their program and you're telling them, I don't think that you can be a teacher. So we wanna do everything that we can to avoid my having those conversations. Um, a couple of years ago, in response to this, um, we, uh, a colleague of mine and, and myself, um, started a collaboration and a summer workshop that we do. Um, my colleague is a secondary English teacher. He teaches um, for the St. Louis Public Schools um, in a magnet high school, teaches English. He's also a director, um, former director and actor, um, so has like Broadway credits to his name. Um, and we did some work with something called the Art of Teaching Workshop. So it was really designing um, a workshop around theater techniques and teaching. And we brought in this technology called VO, um, which is sort of a behavioral approach to, um, to looking at some things. And we designed it around this idea of teacher presence. So what do teachers do when they teach in the field, what do, what do they do to establish a relationship with students, to maintain student engagement, to let you know that you're, they're the teacher in the room? What does that look like? Um, so we used, um, we piloted using um, the VO software as a part of that workshop. So I'm gonna show it to you in a minute. I'm gonna share my screen and up, I'm going to take you somewhere, but I'm going to ping to another tab. So give me a second. I love how it shows you this tool on the top and then, okay. So this is, let me move your faces. This is the VO platform. It's, um, it's a secure platform. Um, one of the things that I am, am questioned about um, is, um, you know, are the videos that are uploaded in this platform, are they secure? Can other people see them? Um, what's going on there? Um, and so it, it is secure. Um, you can share videos within this platform, um, but you can't share or export things out of the platform. So let me log in. Okay, so this is a way that students can upload video and analyze their video systematically through something called a tag session, which I'm going to show you what that entails in just a second. Um, so they can, they can upload their, their footage, they can dissect it via a tag session, and they can also share it with other people within the system for their feedback. Um, they, I could share a video with, for example, Sebastian, and Sebastian could do a tag session with my footage. Um, so it's nimble in terms of being able um, to share with people in network. Um, so let me explain some verbiage. So a tag is a fancy way of saying a label. It's a label. A tag set is a set of labels. Um, and so what, what is interesting and wonderful about VO is you can see this is, these are the list of tag sets. Now some of them come pre-packaged in the system. So Bloom's Taxonomy is in there early years in nursery is in there. But what is wonderful about VO is it allows you to build your own tag sets. Um, and so we built a tag set that I'm gonna show you in just a second around, again, this idea of teacher presence. Um, and so I'm gonna show you what can, um, Sebastian, can you unmute your mic and just tell me if you can see the presence tag set list? 
Uh, yeah, I can see presence tag set and then voice tone, Thank teacher you. voice, etc. below Great. that. Great. So this is the tag set that we started breaking apart. And this tag set um, is something that we, we did by observing a number of teachers across the field. We cross-referenced it with um, what exists in the literature, although I will tell you presence is sort of everywhere and nowhere in the literature. Um, we also got some social validation by sending it to practicing teachers and saying, does this capture things in terms of um, um, what we're looking at in terms of how teachers, again, do their work in the field. So we have, these are, so if, if, when I input this into VO, this is my tag, and then these are subtags, tone, teacher voice, they all have, I'm a SPED teacher, so I operationally define most everything. I can operationally define, like, when you take the trash out, Sebastian, this is what it looks like, and this is what it doesn't look like. Um, story, if, yeah, humor, Student connection, body use, providing directions. Those were, those were the big categories. So we use these definitions to that input. Now I'm switching to the VO screen. Sebastian, can you unmute and tell me that you can see that? Oh, I can see it. Anything that you're uh, looking at, I can see. I know, but I am paranoid. And when I share screen, then I get a smaller version of you. And I've been in, I'm a WebEx girl. So Zoom is a little different. Hey, Mom. Oh, well, welcome, well, welcome to our platform. I know. Hey, Mom. Okay, Mom. wait, I have, to mute, I have to move you again so I can get down to my... Mother. What, baby? <laughs> Me and Bo that you were playing outside and... Uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. I tried to grab him. I accidentally hurt him. He accidentally bit me a little bit too hard. Okay. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. You so me I'm going to find, so I'm going to find the presence tag set here. And I want you, when we set it up in VO, this is what it looks like. So we have our different video tags. And so you have, so here are the, the big categories, body use, humor, student connection, voice. And if I click on these binoculars, you'll see the sub tags within there. So this is how I would set up a tag set that I was going to use. So now when we get back to what do I do with it in a video, I will show you. And I will have to scroll through my bazillion videos. You can see we use this quite a bit. I'm trying to find one. So I apologize. The quality of the one I'm going to show is not the greatest, but it also doesn't involve, it, it shows me. So I'm, I'm comfortable showing that one. So here we go. So when I do a tag session, this is what it's going to look like. So what I do is I will, so I will say here, because it's tagged already, I could do a new tag session with it. But what I do is I click start tag session, and then the system will say, what tags, do, what tag set do you want to use? And I specify what I want. Then I run the video, and as I see something I want to label, then I go ahead and it will show me here. We'll just do this for a second. No, I don't want to do PE. So I want to do this one. Okay, so now my video's there, but all the tags are there as well. So now when I'm going to tag it, I'm going to play the video. And when I see something, I'm using space. Okay. Gather by the river. Oh, that was wordplay. Gather by the river. Yeah. Oh, that was a body use sort of using stance, right? So that's what tagging is doing. So as I'm watching the video, I'm adding those tags in. Now, this tag has this tags, these 
this tag session's already been done. So when I play back the video, I can watch it straight through and it will shoot, I'm gonna forward it a little bit. It'll shoot the tags okay. in as they happen. Now oh, there's one that. Okay, okay. So I'm gonna play around with a couple of these things a little bit, but I wanna get into this idea. So, so let's say, have you ever heard anybody say something like, she has so much presence? You right. I can like, even she has so much presence. put yes. notes in there so about what so we're looking at, right? So I could watch this whole video all the way through, and as the tags come in, the labeling happens, I can view the notes, right? But if I didn't have time or I just wanted to say, like, well, what's going on at 2 minutes and 53 seconds, it takes me right to it. There it is. Let's, so, right? Somebody's exerting a certain kind of vibe. Right. Oh, what's happening at 322? Right. Do you remember The other thing that it's doing, and again, I'm a special ed teacher, so I live in this world, it gives me data. So the data are showing that I had seven instances of some kind of humor. I had two instances of um, a student connection. I have seven instances of voice in that. Now, what you'll notice, too, is actually when you tag, you can tag for positive and negative. Um, because we are working with students in this kind of context who are rel relatively fragile, let's say, in terms of their development, we're just looking at positive tags. So we're saying, you know, let's indicate when you are doing this and doing it well. Negative tagging, though, can be used um, to note parts of footage that either you did it, but it kind of was not great, or you had the opportunity to do something in this moment and you didn't take advantage of it. So that's how, I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute. That's how the, the system works. Um, what's wonderful about this and how this helps is, um, I've worked and coached about a bazillion students in my career, and there's nothing like having people actually see themselves um, on film. Um, I can, if I had a nickel for every conversation I had with a student where I would say, I noticed that you did such in this, you know, and they say, no, I didn't. And you say, no, you really did. And they say, no, I didn't. If I had a nickel for that conversation, I wouldn't be doing my job anymore because I would have retired in Tahiti. Um, Having stu I remember one student in particular I worked with a couple of summers ago who literally when she taught, I think did every possible thing to make her body look as small as possible. She put her hands in her back pocket. She would do this weird slumping over posture like if she was trying to hide. And I would say, get your hands out of your pockets. And she'd say, my hands aren't in my pockets. And I'm like, no, they're on your pockets. So we filmed her and she went, wait, what? that's me? And I was like, yeah, it's you. Um, and so we actually worked on a really great strategy that was very simple, but if she held anything in her hand, didn't even have to use it, pencil, eraser, you know, I don't know, paper, phone, whatever, her body would open and she looked a lot more confident. She would move more. Everything changed when she had something in her hand, but she wouldn't have gotten to that point had she not seen herself on film. Um, the other thing that this helps with, again, and this goes back to my behavioral roots, is it's not enough for a lot of our students to just tell them, be more engaging, do this general generic thing more, because they don't understand what you mean. But if you say, I need you <clears throat> to walk between this point and this point at least twice, during the course of your lesson. I need your voice tone to shift and I need you to do a big teacher voice and a smaller voice. I need to see at least those two things in a lesson. I want your hands to do this when you're talking. Though that's very specific and students then can grab onto that and actually do something with their practice. Um, 
And what I've noticed with students, it takes them a while. It's really weird to watch yourself on film, but it's sort of a callus that you have to build and eventually it becomes just this very clinical thing where students are looking at themselves and saying, man, I, I need to work on this. Um, one student that I'm working with this semester, she's an apprentice teacher. Um, she is an art student. She obviously her 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 practice her, her apprentice teaching experience has gotten totally upended because of the pandemic. And she's actually doing Zoom instruction with my daughter, who is very much into art. And what we're doing is filming that. And then she, I have a special tag set that I've just created for her. And she did it by first watching herself and then saying, I would like to work on my voice pace is too fast. The clarity of my instructions are muddy in certain places. The whiteboard that I'm trying to hold up is weird. You know, the, the, the modeling that I'm doing, you can't see. Um, and I want, you know, Eva to use content specific vocabulary um, naturally throughout this and I need to reinforce that. So I went great and I built a tag for her and now everything that she that we filmed through Zoom, she can now upload that footage into VO and, and parse it apart. Um, so what we're doing as a program now is looking at how can we take this idea of teacher presence and kind of build it backwards from the beginning to the end, build it within our courses. I'm very fortunate, all of our students who enter teacher certification um, get a Surface Pro tablet. That's the platform that we teach on. Um, everybody has that device. All the faculty have the device. I'm talking to you through that device right now. Um, and what we're working on is that everybody who's coming through our program also gets a VO license. Um, and we're embedding it systematically across different courses that we have. Um, We've also had some interesting student research. Um, I run something called the Innovative Practicum um, with certain sort of, this is our gifted practicum um, for students who sort of have applied research bents. And I had a student um, just this past fall research and build a tag set around um, a certain, um, so there's something called Universal Design for Learning Principles. They're sort of, um, Think of learning styles, which I hate because it's not supported by any kind of empirical literature at all. Um, universal design for learning is built on neurological research and has specific indicators in it. So it's multiple means of um, engagement, representation, and um, um, representation. Um, I'm blanking on the third one, but this, this particular student built a whole tag set around multiple means of, of representation that he then piloted in a school and, and that we're, we're working with as well. So it has those kinds of chops um, as well um, to it. I think that's all I have. Are there questions? Can I show you anything? Did I bore you to tears? Dr. Moffrey, thank you so very much for your presentation. Uh, does anybody have any questions, uh, uh, those who are in the room, as to, uh, or any uh, observations or any thoughts as to how this um, software could be applied to our work as uh, theological educators? Well, certainly in, uh, in teaching preaching, I'm going to share this with the professor at, at the seminary who teaches preaching. I mean, for a long time, Philadelphia Seminary was recording students. But getting this kind of feedback, I can say, even I'm going to be teaching a couple of uh, seniors in high school to do some summer school teaching, and I can see something like this even being use, useful for them. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, interactive in a very different way than giving criticism or suggestions live and on time. And just to be ironic, my very first job was in video working with a, with a, dis, with a difficult, I forget exactly what you call them these days, but kids were learning reading and having real reading problems. So this would have been something fabulous 40 years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting stuff. I know I've used it as well. I worked with a student. I mean, we think about using it in front of big crowds of people. I actually was working with a student a couple of semesters ago who, as a child, he was in a car accident. He had a closed head injury. And when he um, 
when you would talk to him, he had a very flat affect. He had very interesting body posture. He didn't do a lot of the conversational things that we do, like nod your head to let people know that you're listening. He would just sit and be very flat. And it was very disorienting if you didn't know that that was why yeah. was the, you know, that he, he looked the way he did. Um, and we talked about that. I have a tag set in there that's called conversational presence. And we actually filmed him talking with different people in our department just to say like, it's not only important for you to do this in front of students, but it's very off putting if you're like in an interview or you're talking to your principal or your colleague, people don't understand why, you look, you look like you're not listening, um, and you just look, you, yeah, it's, it's off-putting. So let's, let's examine that a little bit. Yeah. Well, I, I think preaching is an excellent application, John. Um, when uh, she first uh, showed me the software, uh, it occurred to me that um, as ATS is uh, preparing to vote on a new set of standards, and the new set of standards will enable all ministerial programs to be 100% online. You know, people still have to be able to demonstrate that they're um, able to effectively engage students in that 100% online format, not just in intellectual formation, but also in human uh, or personal or character formation, um, uh, whatever the buzzword is for ATS for that regard, uh, in spiritual and pastoral formation. And this is a way for uh, students and uh, faculty instructors who are doing field education or field direction uh, to continue um, to uh, stay in touch with one another uh, as students will film things that they're doing and then the faculty member can go in and then code uh, what it is that um, he or she is observing and share it with the student uh, um, for the purpose of instruction. But this is coming up in June. We're going to have um, ATS World. You know, it's it's different from the current one where residency is still um, a requirement and you have to apply for exception or for experiment status to get online. This is um, this is uh, possibly a tool that, that will do us as we enter into this new uh, era of ATS's existence. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Roland, what about you? Uh, anything here that would benefit your uh, teaching community? Yeah, like I said, you know, the fact that, you know, because I teach, I teach um, pre-service teachers. I usually get it at the beginning of their program when I'm doing educational technology versus the end. But, you know, I'm going to actually send this to my curriculum department folks and let them take a look at it because I don't know if they've seen this tool or not. But from the standpoint of using it in seminary, um, I think any time that we're going to be using talking head videos, especially, I think this is a good way to critique the instructors. Yeah, you know, oh, <laughs> probably that's more so than the, than, the, <laughs> than the teachers. I mean, if you're I mean, open the to it. <laughs> uh, well, well, I mean, because, because again, I think a lot of times, you know, especially, especially when you're dealing with higher ed faculty, higher ed faculty really aren't trained to teach, you know, they're trained in their subject matter, you know, this is true with any higher ed, not just seminary, but, you know, they're great at their subject matter, but sometimes teaching is where their weak point is, and, you know, especially now we're asking them to, 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 you know, now record their lectures, you know, being able to, you know, they're not, you know, they're not a lot of more instructional designers, or even have a concept of what instructional design is, being able to kind of go through some of their videos and and you know put you know use this particular technology to kind of just go over as a training tool so they can improve their delivery. I think will be is is an excellent. Yeah, I love within, that application, Roland. Um, it, we're in an era where the meta professional skill sets such mm -hmm. as instructional design, um, educational technology, um, uh, building out videos and stuff like that, yeah. are now the professional skill sets, at least during this time of emergency remote instruction. Right. And, and for people who uh, don't have these um, meta-professional skills, has professional skill sets hurting. And uh, your ideas, I think, top-notch. 
in terms of how this could be useful to every institution that has faculty teaching online or faculty right. teaching in a mode of emergency remote instruction, especially as we go into the fall term. Yeah, yeah, because like I said, this would be a great time. Like I said, it's, the summer is a great time where you can get some training in, <laughs> you know, do some things, have your faculty, you know, do some mock training, you know, do some mock videos and stuff like that for the sake of so they can be critiqued and critique each other as well. But, but yeah, so I mean, it's still also be, also be a great tool for students, obviously, like I said, in, in preaching classes and things such as that. But, you know, I'm always looking at it from the standpoint of how can I improve faculty's delivery of content. And I think this is actually. Um, well, very good. Uh, well, what about Sunday or George? Uh, any thoughts from uh, either of you? Mm -hmm. We've seen Sunday before. She was in here, uh, has been here a couple of times. So welcome yeah. back, Sunday. George? Any? Sorry, my apologies. I was kind of distracted here. Thank you, Stephanie, for the presentation. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Sunday. Thanks. Uh, George? I need to unmute. Oh, there you go. Ah, there you are. How are you doing, George? Good, how are you? George. Uh, Stephanie, it's a pleasure meeting you. Nice to meet you. I've heard your voice over the phone many times. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's a good presentation. I like the video. I like the idea that you can comment on uh, um, on the movement, etc., and correct people's preaching or... So it's, uh, it's useful. I don't know how we can use it. We can use it probably in uh, at the school, but that's for preaching and um, homily, et cetera, so they can see it. Well, especially, um, I like uh, Robin's idea about using it for teacher training. So yep. uh, if teachers were to do a single pilot uh, hybrid um, presentation uh, or uh, instruction, uh, then... Um, uh, somebody who's working with that teacher could go through and tag a number of instances and say, well, you know, in this particular area, you could use a slide, or in this particular area, you might right. do X, it Y, also, or Z. Yeah, it also gives people a chance to, to you know, to see what their unconscious mannerisms are, because everybody has, everybody has a set, and, and they actually differ on video sometimes than they do live, because people are aware that a camera is there, and then they just tend to do things that they may not even do live. A good example, I have to, I have to, when I'm recording, I have to make sure that I don't say you know a lot. Because I tend to just stick it in there. And until I actually go back and watch a video to, to critique myself, I don't even know that I'm doing it. <laughs> and there'll just be a bunch of you knows in there. And I don't do that usually when I'm speaking live. But when I'm, when I'm recording on camera, that was a tendency that I tended to do because that was my space holder, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I just did it right there. Um, but so having something that, you know, having, I think this tool is excellent any time that you're going to be in any environment where you know you're going to be using video because it gives you a chance to, to go back and, and, and do those critiques and go back and identify certain things. And, because we are, like I said, because we're all in institutions where data-driven changes, <laughs> you have to show data on why you're doing things and why you're changing things. Being able to have a, you know, a catalog of, of critiques or, or instructions, I think would be good. Yeah, and if the people don't mind, um there's bound to be certain things that are common to what everybody's doing. And if, uh, you know, if clips could be created using Camtasia or some, some video editing software that would provide a compilation of, uh, of uh, training materials that new faculty would be able to benefit from, yeah. then that would, uh, that would be very helpful as well. Um, so, uh, uh, does the, um, uh, does the software cost anything? Uh, do you have a paid subscription or how does it, how does uh, the money work? Yeah, it does. Um, so there's a, a certain a fee that we pay that's about 
two hundred dollars a year to maintain the just the the license and the the platform, and then it's about twenty dollars per student per semester um, for students. But um, the the developer Paul Miller, who is the nicest person on the face of the earth, um, is very flexible in terms of. Um, now that we're kind of moving to the logistics of how do we onboard people, you know, as they enter teacher certification and, and keep up with who's in the system and who's not, um, he's very flexible about saying, like, let's do kind of a flat rate for, you know, many licenses per year and then revisit, have ways that we check in at the end of every um, academic year to kind of move people out, keep people in. So, um, yeah, the only challenge about him and, you know, with – with all of you working in distance education, he's in he's in the UK, so you just have the time difference, but <laughs> very flexible. But he seems like he's accessible from what you're saying. Very. Yeah. Oh, very. And he will. I had some weird issue going on in the fall, and he's yeah, he's extremely helpful. And he was like, I enrolled myself as a like a person in in your class. You know, he 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 gets involved and, and helps troubleshoot whatever might be happening um so yeah i've had nothing i do know in teacher ed my dean will occasionally forward me um you know information about other platforms in the united states that are, are purporting to do similar things i haven't found one quite as nimble as vo is mm -hmm. so well in the, the price seems to be right uh, 200 oh, yeah. a year a school can afford and then the 20 per student is something that can be passed off in a um and a registration fee, a course registration fee. Yeah, yeah, lab fees will definitely take care of. Right. So uh, what about teachers? Uh, does it cost anything? Do teachers have to pay anything for their footprint on there, or is it just the students? So students, I mean, I have a VO license, um, so that gets that gets enrolled in the cost of licenses. I just have a different level of, of permission, so I have, I'm an administrator and can go in and like a student can't make a tag set. I can make right. a tag set as an administrator. Right. Um, so our instructors have licenses. We pay the same amount for them. They just get admin rights, um, whereas our students wouldn't have those. That makes sense. So the instructors are a year. Or what? The instructor. The instructors are two hundred dollars per year for the license. No, no, no. There's one flat fee that I pay per year to just continue. Like it's sort of the upkeep fee. And then when we're adding licenses in, those are twenty dollars per student. Got it. Okay. Yeah, no, so I so pay like a, a yearly like re up thing. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. And um, so the the price is good, and the tech support is good, and the software, um, the, what its functionality is good. So we're, we've got three good things um, uh, recommending this uh, for our use, especially if we can think of immediate applications where. Uh, we're not just uh, finding a tool that can do something neat and looking for an application. We actually already have an application where this tool would solve a problem uh, that we haven't been able to solve with other applications uh, or other uh, tools. So um, uh, that's very helpful. Um, and thank you so very much for the presentation. If there's uh, nothing else from anybody else, uh, maybe um, uh, do you have any uh, concluding remarks? Me? Yeah. <laughs> um. No, I don't think so. A picture is worth a set, thousand words, so you can tell them all day long, but until they see themselves, it doesn't stick typically. Very cool. Uh, anything from anybody else in the group before we close in prayer? Uh, John, would you, uh, would you close this in prayer? Sure. We will be with you. Good and gracious God, thank you for providing us with these tools that we can get together and learn more about how we can teach and learn from each other and with each other. Thank you for protecting us as we go through this strange time of not being in classrooms and not being in a normal world and taking care of us and offering us and giving us what we need from day to day as we move forward. Protect us and bless everyone who is around us and who we are not near and able to be with this time. And uh, we look forward to days in the future, remembering that Jesus taught us just a few weeks ago what 
the true gift is that God and Christ have given us. In your name, amen. 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 Um, and, and that's true. Um, the true gift that Christ gave us is, uh, it's like we've been tagged, we're being tagged all the way through our lives. And uh, <laughs> we'll be able to sit with, uh, with, with Jesus one day and he'll be like, okay, do you see this particular tag right here where you put your hands in your pockets? You know, whatever the metaphor would be. Don't so it's do that. not just positive, right, Sebastian? There are those yeah. negative ones on us? Yeah, yeah, you get the positive <laughs> and the negative. That's right. Maybe there's a balance scale, you know? So, uh, well, then let's hope so. <laughs> God is good all the time, no matter all what. The time. <laughs> he is risen indeed. All right. Well, thank indeed. you, everybody, for coming. And uh, Dr. Maffrey, thank you so very much for uh, spending the time with us today. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to meet right. you all.